This is a real life tractor beam that I created. It actually creates waves that pull objects toward it as opposed to pushing the objects away. It's so weird, it seems like it should be splashed away from it, but it goes towards it. Larger versions of this may be used in the future for directing objects in the oceans or even collecting things from the surface of the ocean. Normally when you're floating in the water and there are waves, you usually always slowly drift the same direction as the waves are going. And there are two reasons for this. The first one is simple. The wind makes the waves and the wind will push you in the same direction that it's pushing the waves. But even when there's absolutely no wind, you still tend to drift in the same direction that the waves are moving. The reason that this happens isn't as straightforward as you might think. Because when you're watching waves move, nothing is actually moving. The water itself is staying in mostly the same spot. But if you follow motion of a single particle, what you get is actually a circular path. The deeper you go, the smaller the circles get. But this isn't exactly true. Because the velocity at the top of the circle is faster than the bottom of the circle, there's actually a net movement of each individual water particle moving with the waves. So it makes these loops that get pushed along with the wave. So anything floating on the surface of a regular wave will actually be pushed away from the wave source. This gets amplified even more when you have shallow water. You can see this happen quite easily when I make some regular waves on the water here. Okay, so in order to do this, I have a wave signal generator here. Then I have that going to this device here, which is basically kind of like a speaker that's gonna vibrate the end tip here. This ring's gonna amplify the movement and then it's gonna shake this styrofoam piece here. And I can change the amplitude. See, I can just turn it on here. It'll start making waves. So these are gonna be very good regular waves at a specific frequency. So I can grab a ping pong ball and put it near the wave generator and it'll get pushed away from it. If I put a small boat out on the waves, the boat always gets pushed away from the wave source. But this isn't always the case. There's a really interesting and odd phenomenon that happens when you increase the amplitude of these surface waves at a given frequency. For example, if I just keep this same frequency and turn up the amplitude so to make bigger waves, something completely unexpected happens. The waves propagate away from the wave source, but surface particles actually start to move toward the wave source. So you can see this a little bit better when I put some black dye in the water. You can see the regular waves coming out, but then if I increase the amplitude, there's a sudden transition into 3D waves. And by 3D waves, I mean the waves aren't just changing in two dimensions now, they're changing in three dimensions as well. You can see that it creates this standing wave pattern alternating back and forth. Because we're in a closed container here, it creates this flow pattern. So when we have the two dimensional waves with low amplitude, you can see that the flow is away from the waves and then it gets fed in with more water from the side. So it creates this type of flow pattern. But then when it switches to the three-dimensional waves, the flow actually reverses suddenly. And it feeds in through the center and gets expelled out the sides. It's really neat to watch this destabilization process happen in real time. So you can see with regular waves, it's flowing away from the wave source, but then the waves start to become unstable. They destabilize and start to form these 3D waves. And as soon as that happens, you can see suddenly the flow stops, reverses, these eddies form, and then the flow goes the opposite direction. It actually sucks it into the wave source. Now this is really neat because we aren't just creating fluid motion right at the wave source like a pump would do, but as the waves propagate out, it causes the surface of those waves to move towards the wave maker. So it creates this inward fluid motion everywhere the waves are. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone. And one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. 
Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com actionlab, or you can click the link in the description or scan the QR code. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. So I can create waves that pull things toward the wave source as opposed to pushing it away. And the thing is, there's no real good explanation for exactly why this happens. The mechanism for this is called modulation instability. It happens because the periodic waveforms created here are nonlinear. This leads to an instability that eventually breaks up the waves into a train of pulses that create vortices. And these vortices can group together to create large flow in one direction. Now the reason for the overall flow change in this direction is not very well understood. We know it happens, but we don't have a really good rigorous proof mathematically for why it happens. It's almost like organized chaos. But the implications of this could be huge. It could allow for manipulation of objects on the surface of bodies of water far away from the wave source. You can make an object move towards you or away from you or just stand completely still depending on the amplitude of the regular waves that you're sending out. In the original paper describing this setup, the authors call it a tractor beam because they can actually pull things inward using outward propagating waves. So if you're ever out on the lake and you start being pulled in towards the waves, you know that it's probably just me trying out my giant water-based tractor beam. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. And check out theactionlab.com for Action Lab gear. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.